Grab your glasses, everybody. It's time for a moonshine safari. Hey, shiners. Hello. F all y'all. Happy Can't President's Day. Yeah, I guess it is President's Day. It today. is President's Well, it is when we're recording. You're probably not going to see this for another week. But it's still or President's thereabouts. Day. So, but uh, it is President's Day, but... I'm working, Del Toro's working, and we have... I am not working. Robin behind the camera today. Say hi, Robin. Woo Hello. Uh, Robin's behind the camera, and Dina over here, the beautiful Dina. Uh, she, they have the day off because they keep bankers hours. We do. As you know, I'm in a mortgage business. And, and we have a dog. I'm in the mortgage business, too, and but I own my own business that if I don't work, I don't get paid. So, yeah, I'm taking a little break to record this for you, our wonderful you. listeners and watchers. Actually, I'm doing it for myself, but anyway. All right. Shine out time, Dina. Shine out. You like our Ray-Bans? Right. We like all styling today. We are styling. That's because we got all the lightage going on now. So. Future's so bright. I got yeah. And, oh, and check out the last video, man. I'll tell you what. Del Toro did a great job editing and all that stuff. He's doing a fabulous job doing this. And it's really Robin's funny, Robin's getting good on the editing on the music We're going to talk about that yeah. coming up on Hello. the music section. Absolutely. So. All right. Shine out time, Dina. You got any shine outs? I do. What so we have tried a new restaurant because we all know we like to try our restaurants. It's called hey, Airs of AZ Pita. It's so close to us, it's not even funny. And it's really tasty. So it's Mediterranean, Greek oh, style. We love it's awesome. Mediterranean food. We love tasty. Uh, Hey, you've heard us give Saba's like oh, uh, yeah. in Phoenix the huge props. And man, I wish he would make a store well, out here. Well, if Actually, he did, it would be a bad, <laughs> right? It would be bad news. But George over there at Sava's is amazing. So, but, so talented. But AZ Pita, you know what? It was delicious. Thank you so much. It was so good. Was Thank great. you. I appreciate that. And it's really cool that they're so close. It's so close. It is so close to us. So that's, that's cool. I've got a few. The ones that we always do, and because they're important to us as our veterans and those who are deployed, um, we want you home. Come home. All right. We want you home and home soon. Be safe. You're always in our thoughts and prayers all the time in your family. Absolutely. Okay? Um, and this is a little cool. Uh, I told you guys last show that um, when I uh, introduced you to Bumble and if you got the hint, I haven't seen anybody respond yet. And uh, Del Toro put one of those little hints right up here for you um, in the last show. So you should be able to see it, and then you would know what Bumble means. If you if you still want to participate, put it in the comments below. I'll send you a sticker. Uh, we'll connect somehow, email and blah blah. Okay. So I told you I was had something coming from across the pond, right? Yep. Medina, it got here. Old man Chelsea's pond. Oh. <laughs> old man Kelsey. Kelsey, Chelsea. that's right, Chelsea. Oops. Ernest T. Bass, for those of you. And there's another one for you. Where's Ernest T. Bass from? What show? You should know this. Anyway. Um, it was a limited run of guitars, about 200. This is the second run that they did that was so popular over from Anderton's. So I'm going to give a shine yep. out to Anderton's uh, over there in the, the Brexit England place. So, Captain, nice job. Yeah. Uh, but Pete, Danish Pete, Pete Honore. Here it is. Now, you're probably not going to see the pick guard because of the green screen. But, because that's my edit. But this is a green purloid pick guard on this beautiful. Okay, and they got the purple. Very purple. Oh, man. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, it's a Squire by Fender Bullet uh, Telecaster. And it's gorgeous. In fact, they sent... Two pick guards, one white pick guard that came on the guitar, and another one that was signed by Pete. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. See, signed by Pete. So I have two pick guards Name in here. Name of Pete. Name of Pete. And I bought this three ply perloid. And uh, oh, by the way, her name is Yolanda. Yolanda. Which I guess is Spanish for violet flower. At least that's what I looked up on Google. Okay. If I'm wrong, any of you Spanish-speaking people, which she is not one of them. I'm not. Uh, it's gorgeous. I love it. Unless I've been you playing want a soda. It. Now, this is just a cheap strap I had. I know it doesn't go with the guitar, so no crappy comments in the back. I'm already trying to pick out a good one because I need a green strap for this. 
If you have any ideas, send me some ideas. What a green strap would look great with this. And no, it's not Joker and not the Hulk. No, I like green and purple. I just do. Green is my favorite color and purple is my second favorite color. And there you go. So, it shine out to... me think of the Joker. Huh? It always makes me think of the Joker. Uh, or the Hulk, because he has purple pants and he's green, but... It's true. It's not. I like green and I like purple. He does. Anyway, I do. So, shine out to all you guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That's good. I love it. I've been playing it. Oh, so much fun. Thank you so much. And it's great, too. And like I said, it's a, it's a, it was a limited run, and it was it's a Squire, so it wasn't very expensive at all. And thank you. Appreciate it. All right. It was awesome. Music time. Yeah, music. Hey, it's time for some music. Um, Dana, what have you been up to music-wise? So, Robin and I have been practicing and now have recorded... And mixed by Robin, um, I'll Fly Away. Uh, the cool. sort of bluegrassy, oh brother, where art thou version. So, um, somebody in my family liked it, and we had done it when she was very little, but decided to go ahead and re-record it now, and it's so funny because when you're related, um, we sound like one person. Sometimes. Well, you sound very similar, like one. Del Tora. On the, uh, season. Del Tora. Del Tora and I are working. Del Toro and I are working on a song, uh, the opposite of the wholesome, correct, beautiful song that you. I did not write it. All right. Um, because I'm wholesome. <laughs> right. Then he, um, and we sound like one person sometimes because we, obviously because well, very similar. So. so we have a dog, our our hoochie dog. You can see her right here. Maybe. She is. Um, Take her up, sure. Your, your yeah. music. All right. My music. What yes. we've been up to is, well, new guitar. Yolanda. That's what I've been up to. Playing her. Playing some new rhythms. Playing some new melodies. Um, did her Can brain you, fall out? What no, was that? My phone. <laughs> hi. Oh, there she is. Hi. That's Say Uchi. Hi. That's Uchi, Uchi Mama. Yeah, would you want to? Oh, she's gonna lick you. Anyway, she's not. I'm not gonna let her. And then, um, Del Toro. I've been working also on "Fuck All the Way Off," and um, naughty. Yeah, I don't know. Well, hello, Ken Tankers, Josh. See, it's true. It's like Taz. It's true. Yep. This is like me all the time, and it's Monday, so I'm extra this. Um, all right. Anything else about music? Um, we're gonna be working on three songs, very short ones, but what's called Pyre, correct, Robin? Yes, by Super Giant Games. Oh, That's very it. cool. That's I didn't next. Know that. All right, very. So good. cranked out, all fly away, so we can move right. on to this one. Listening wise, I've been listening to a lot. Actually, listening, I've been listening to Waylon Jennings because I have uh, reconnected to a wonderful show. When I was growing up, I loved uh, Dukes of Hazard. I love that show. Um, and after it got popular, they used to bring in a lot of country music groups because, well, they were number one show on Friday night in the country. And the first group, I think, that popped in, other than Jesse Coulter, which you didn't really see her, they kind of played her in the background, was the Oak Ridge Boys. Um, and I love Oak Ridge Boys. And my mom loved Oak Ridge Boys. And uh, so I've been playing Oak Ridge Boys. If you don't know who they are, Del Toro. Put a little link for Oak Ridge Boys right in here somewhere, okay? Um, hey, Robin. Yeah. So Can you tilt that up a little bit more? It didn't go back to where it was. Thank you. Perfect. Um, so, Oak Ridge Boys, Waylon Jennings. Shocking. I would still love to hear my Georgia Thunderbolts, but I can't buy a CD and I can't listen to them on any streaming. Thing. At least so not yet. I don't know. I need to hear we my Georgia to. Thunderbolts. Anyway. So, all right, that's it for music for us. Okay? Yeah. So here's our little section of where we do, I don't know, random lists. Okay? Last week we talked about, what, our favorite silly movies, right? Yes. Our favorite silly movies. Uh, today it'll be a little more serious. Um, not that we're trying to bring anybody down or anything, but what we talk about, I kind of, it kind of popped in my mind the other day, and I asked Dina what she thought my, you know, what this was, and... Uh, she got one of them. I mean, she really got two of them. 
And the, uh, the, 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 the third one, she real or the, actually the first one. I did me, not realize She didn't realize it, it was that impact. big of a deal um, for me. But we were talking about the, the scariest moments of our life. Mm. Okay, the scariest moments of our life thus far. Obviously, I haven't lived our whole, we haven't lived our whole lives yet, obviously. So Unless hopefully we won't have any scarier moments than we've already had. Exactly. Hopefully. Hopefully. Our lips to God's ears, even though he doesn't listen to me very much. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So we talk about scariest moments. All right. So have you given this some thought? Because I have my I thought. have been thinking, but I want you to start because the okay, problem I'll is start. I got to be honest with you. We'll start with number three. I don't come up with them very well. Okay. So number three, my third most scariest moment in my life was when uh, Dina was giving birth to Robin. And Robin, Robin was stubborn and, well, not, not, well, she's stubborn and she was stubborn. She still is. But she was, she liked to play with the umbilical cord, apparently, and liked to wear it as a necklace. And Correct. that was what she was doing the whole time while she was trying to come out at the same time. I guess she wanted to bring it with her um, around she her neck. Didn't right? really extra want to come out at all. No, she didn't. You were in like, but that wasn't the scary part. The yeah. scary part was not that. The scary part was when the time came and it was coming and then... Every time Dina would have contraction, would have pushed, and her heartbeat would go down, and that was a little disconcerting, obviously. And the doctor came in, and he was really cool, Doctor Gordon. We talked about him in our previous podcast Amazing. back in the day. Um, but then uh, when he went through some, he did some stuff and had to get her out, and as she was coming out, you could see she was blue, had the thing wrapped around her yeah. neck. Uh, doc didn't wait a second. I'm right there because I had. Her right leg. <laughs> I had a full up close five K view, <laughs> man. I was right there. So, um, yeah, uh, he took care of business and got her out. And the nurses took her immediately over to the little trade table over there. Started working on her. And started working on her because she was blue. Blue. And she was not making no noise. Um, then Dina was all messed up. They did all kinds of stuff to her to get Robin out. Yeah. And then uh, he told me I need to go over there <laughs> while he did some other stuff. So over by where Robin was. And I walked over and just, there's no noise. And all of a sudden you hear this. And I started getting really scared because yeah. I didn't hear nothing. And then you hear this tiny little baby whimper. And then. She got louder. She did. As time went on. She did. <laughs> And that was number three, scariest moment for me. Okay. So, I really had a hard time with this. In fact, I'm not even sure I'm going to come up with three. That's okay. You don't have to is. come up with three. Um, I'll tell you that one of them was when I was a teenager. And I'll just suffice it to say that someone was driving to the point to where I thought we were going to crash. Oh. Yeah, I absolutely believed we were going to crash. And I absolutely believed that was all that was all it was going to be. Yeah, I was going to die. Yeah. Um, that's a scary Obviously, moment. that didn't happen, but I absolutely Thank believed God. it at that point. Right. All right. Number two. Two. For Josh. Uh, second scariest moment was the birth of Del Toro. Shocking. Now you say, well, what? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Dina's pregnancies were pretty normal for the most part. Actually, her births simple. were like ridiculous. Yeah, that's anyway. where I didn't have a good time. So she was having some contractions. We went in to get checked. Uh, next thing you know, the umbilical cord's coming off in the nurse's hand. Blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, it's emergency C section. I'm in there. They dress me up, but I can't go in. They want to put her out. She's scared. Blah, blah. Everything is like Absolutely. going crazy. It's a whirlwind. I don't know what's next. Next thing I know, a little bloody baby pops out. He's screaming, bloody, little you know, bloody baby. and That's they kind of, they kind of wrap him up in the thing. They give him to me. I walk him over there and then I'm asking about her. She's like, well, she's going to wake up in a couple hours. Oh, and she was, you, she looked rough because yeah, that was no fun. And it was a scary moment. It was exciting. Scary for both of us because I didn't know what was happening. I could, I thought I was going with both of them that time. That was my scary moment. Yep. Okay. That's number two for me. Do you have another? Well, the only other one I can really think of, and I don't even know how well this qualifies, except for I always had this kind of, if you want to call it phobia, it didn't threaten my daily life, but mm -hmm. I always had this thing about being put completely to sleep. 
for surgeries. And so um, I actually started having some gallbladder issues when I was pregnant with Robin. And they didn't find it for a couple years, figure out what it was. Because even though I told them what it was, they weren't listening to me. Um, what do I know? Shocking. Um, Doctors that don't And listen. so eventually when they figure it out and I'm going in for surgery, I know I need to go in for surgery. I'm not fighting that part of it. But I was definitely afraid. Mm. And that's like, and I, well, you're part afraid. of you... You're afraid. Yeah, with um, You're afraid. Del Toro too. Yeah, with Del Toro. Well, I mean, that's well, always been a thing yeah. for me, and so like it's it's like this idea that you just won't wake up. I think that came from your mom though, because she had a fear of death too. I think that was she kind did. of ingrained in you. I think. Well, that's a lot of where our fears come from too. From but I also think there's a part of yeah. you that realizes that 99 times out of 100, that's an illogical fear, and you'll be fine. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you don't but feel it. I don't want to be the one. Anyway, right. Exactly. Don't want to be the one. Exactly. Okay. Numero uno Numero for me. Uno. Uh, and this is going to lead actually into our uh, discussion about uh, MS. And that's what we, that's going to be the main topic that we talk about on our Moonshine Safari. Because, you know, even though she doesn't like to necessarily admit it, it does affect all of us. And it is a main thing that, uh, I don't like to admit that I have it. That runs through our lives. I absolutely know that it affects the entire family. Sure. All right. Uh, but we deal with it, I mean, the best we can, and sometimes we don't want to deal with it like everybody else, and we fight it, and we grump about it, and bitch and complain, sure. but that doesn't make it go away. You still it have it. It doesn't. You I wish it did, because it would be gone. Right. So, number one is, uh, Dina was on a, um, uh, Sub shot. medicine protocol, Capaxone, right? Uh, it was a little deeper than sub Q though. It, it wasn't was as deep, yeah, sub-Q but it was shot. a little deeper than that because the sub Q shots you're taking now, these needles were bigger. But anyway, um, so I had you the, get like auto jet, yes, thingy, yeah, the little the plastic, whatever. Yeah. Um, so we would get these shots and load them up in that thing, and they trained us how to they trained me how to do the shots and where to do the shots and how to do the shots and all the stuff and then they gave us number you know pamphlets and all this information and everything right. about what to do and she had an on-call nurse that we could call if there was yep. any issue you know which was really cool because copaxone i mean they really did a great job because well they're trying to sell the drugs i mean they're gonna take care of that so um so there was one time i was giving her a shot and um she passed out on me and I didn't know she passed out. I didn't know it was a pass out. I didn't know it was a thing. Uh, I gave her a shot. She tells me. It had never happened before. Never. I and mean, she we tells me. It for a while. <laughs> right. And you tell me, you're not feeling good. Something's up. Something's wrong. And she's on the edge of the bed. And next thing, poop, she's gone. And I freak the f out. I mean, it was scary. I didn't know what to do. I'm like trying to find out if she's breathing. She's. I find out, she, okay, she's breathing. She's not coming to. Um, I get on the phone and I call the emergency number. Then they proceed to tell me, oh, by the way, if you happen to get the shot, like, directly into, like, a vein, yeah, I'll do that. See, I can laugh because I wasn't the one afraid. You know? So I can laugh because it wasn't me. I was asleep. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. That was not funny. See, the problem is... I can't is, even joke about that. that I know. That shit is not funny to me. The problem <laughs> is all. they tell you things like it could make you a little anxious. That they is did not say how that. I That's would describe true. What they that, said what happened. No, they didn't say they would just it go would take you poof, out. Like, and it did. Knock her. You were gone. I would say the whole time I took Copaxone, it probably happened a total of two or three times. But the good news is, after the first time, at least you know. Then we knew. Okay, well, we Twenty know thirty what to do. seconds. Sit you're down, back. Be fine. You're okay. Like, yeah. yeah. That so. was my scariest thing. My scariest moment. Okay. So. I thought I killed you. Well, I was pretty scared when I started feeling weird, but. That's it. I can't even say that was one of the most scary moments. Um, I got, I got nothing else. Okay, that's fine. She's got nothing else. I got nothing. She's else. not had a scary life. Sure. It's good, except for the. Or maybe no. I'm just scared all the time. Well, there was the so time in the just... ocean. That was a scary. Oh, time. that's right. Okay, so this yeah, is actually even tell you not that. a bad one. See, because I forget. Well, no. What do you not mean? Forget, not a bad one. But... It's still a bad one. It's still not good. Same. I was. We were visiting family in um, Southern California. And we had all gone to the beach because that's what people do in Southern California, I guess. Anyway, so we were swimming and um, my father got in trouble. And so I kind of went out further to get to him because I had a one of those little boogie boards that, you know, you have a like ankle thing. It's a that little you, styrofoam it, board. Attaches to, your, yeah. attaches to your ankle. 
Um, so I went out to try to help him and then maybe we could both share it. But he was not, he was sort of um, reacting to the stress. So he was not paying attention to anything else other than he wanted no. the float. He was so, in survival mode, I guess. Um, yeah, in survival mode, that's a good way to put it. Anyway, so, uh, but the problem is I was connected to it. Yeah, so it's just it was a bad situation right. all the way around. Somebody saw us; they started to come out to us. Once he saw somebody coming, he relaxed. We were okay, and we all came in. But it was pretty scary. That'd be scary. I don't like. I don't swim in the ocean. Mm -mm. If they're mm -hmm. there, they can eat me. Anyway, so that being said, and she's been on a lot of protocols, and we'll talk about some of those specifically at other yes. times. We kind of want to just get into today is kind of just talk about like the daily deals, like what. The things that an MS, a person with MS, and she has relapsing, remitting, well, depends on which doctor you ask. Some would say she has progressive, and some would say she has relapsing, remitting, and blah, 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 blah. So, whatever. She has MS and small fiber neuropathy, yes, um, which is also not a fun thing to have. But some of the daily deals, um, challenges, and things that we have to consider that a lot of people don't have to consider. Don't even think about. When you have things like this. I didn't this. think about it. Uh, the one is the mobility. Right? Oh, absolutely. So talk, talk about okay. I mean, what, what, are, what so, are the things that you do to help you with your mobility? Well, just to give a quick example, like when we were getting ready to do this video, um, they set everything up and then somebody helps me get to this chair because there are cords and stuff everywhere and I yeah. can't, it's like I don't know navigate. that I can navigate them by myself right so i need a little bit of help and the big thing is too is like when she's walking and things and, and she still has she still can walk she uses a cane right yes. uh she uses a cane we'll talk about the cane she uses too as sometimes because she has a specific cane she likes and we'll talk about the cane she's used and the ones that she maybe will recommend uh to people uh for stability and things like that but um she um she can still get up and move, and but the, the problem is is that there can't be a lot of other motion going around her, right? Well, and I have to be in somewhere that I'm completely familiar with because what happens is if it take if it distracts me, like something's in my peripheral vision that I'm not used to, and it distracts my eyes, I, I'm, I'm going to fall. Yeah. It'll take my balance, and I'll fall. And I'm just going to interrupt you right there because I'm just going to tell you right now as we're talking this video, he, she's dealing with something right now because I saw it out of the corner of my eye. Her leg is pulling. It's pulling. It's pulling on her left leg is pulling, and what what, what the way we describe it is pulling. Well, you yeah. you describe it to them what you say, and that's how how we call it pulling or twitching. Yeah, so yeah. Call, so basically, pulling. the way I've always said it is, it's almost like when you go to the doctor, and he takes the little rubber mallet and he. Is testing your reflexes and so yeah. he'll hit your knee and your knee pops up and you it's not because you did it it just happens it's involuntary so what happens is if my nerve if i'm sitting in a way that it tweaks my nerve whatever it'll start to pull like that like it'll contract the muscle and i there's no control over it. it's just going to happen think about doing this just think about doing this but without your permission now it's you, just happening and, and you can't stop it <laughs> It's like having a night cramp, like a cramp in your leg at night or something. You can't stretch it out, but it doesn't stop. Hmm. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. You have to take, well, I mean, there are certain medicines that you can take to help calm it down. Uh, but they but also once it gets make going, you, whew, yeah. Or, right, they make you even make less you, stable, right? Or to make you sleepy. sleepy and, right? you know, it's like I, I take as little of those medications as I possibly right. can because I like to feel like I'm here. Right. And not, but you know, it's, and it's also something that we've learned over time, some limited methods of control, certain foods that I eat seem right. to aggravate. We talked about that last time too, um, right? About diet. Mm -hmm. You know, all of that impacts, but it's like, and you know, if you're tired by the end of the day, it's rough. And she goes to the gym, like today she went to the gym and she's working out because she's not stopping. She's not going to let this thing, you know, beat her. I'm trying. But then she... She pays for that because then her legs get sore and that makes extra twitches. Twitches, right? Yeah. So, so it's, yeah, the mobility is definitely. Yep. I think that that's probably, if somebody were to say the biggest impact to my life, that's probably number one. Mobility. Yeah, Just mobility. I would say too. And I think what we'll do is we'll take, um, we'll take other sections like next week we'll we'll finish talking about these daily deals and what she did we talked about mobility today i think maybe next time we'll talk about flexibility 
and um, disrupted sleep and some other things because we're running out of time yeah. and we need to move along to the time for drink. Sure. Because right. the Moonshine Safari is not only just about the MS and about the Get it? scariest Safari, moments MS. and all of that. Um, it's about our fun too and what we like to do. And part of that is food, music, and drink. And I don't know if I'm going to have any fun with this today. Because this is one of Dina's drinks, okay? It is one of my This drinks. is one of hers. It's I call it the limey. Okay? Now, you're probably going to get the face, the icky face for me. And don't pay attention to this cup. This is Dina's cup. Uh, Robin, at one time, went to this school that I'm covering up. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to get hate mail from all those pussy cats down at the Dirty Tea. Anyway... <laughs> Right. Wonder, wonder what school he's talking about. I'm <laughs> just kidding. She's laughing over there. All right. So I'll tell you what's in here, and then I'm going to bravely take a drink of it. Uh, it's oh, got it's lemon lime much. soda in it. and Okay, it's but lemon lime blue sky soda. Blue sky soda. And it's got uh, vanilla vodka, veil vanilla vodka, and just some Bacardi white rum. All right. I call it the limey. And I, and I Wait, like rum. What does it taste like? I like, not yet. I like rum <laughs> and I like the veil vodka. That lemon lime is not good. <laughs> you took a bigger drink than I ever take. No, I was, I was trying. That is foul. She wants me to tell you what I said before. I said, that's what a dead rhinoceros is must taste like because that is horrible oh you know that sounds like a heraldism by the way your father would say something like that <laughs> anyway we're running out of time thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the show if you have any questions you can contact us at all of our social media stuff at moonshinesafari.com josh and dean at moonshinesafari.com uh our instagrams all of that fun stuff and remember spread the shine everybody be good to each other yeah, please all right and we'll see you next time on Moonshine Safari. Bye. See ya. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Moonshine Safari. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to our channel, as well as check the description for information on our social media sites, as well as our Patreon account to help support our adventures in the Moonshine Wilderness.